Hey guys, welcome to Friday Manna. My name is Jeremy Connell, and I am just blessed to be here to share God's word, th- word with you this morning. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, and God, I just thank you so much for this time. I pray that you'd bless it. I pray that your word would just, um, people would hear it, and it would just guide them where they need to go. God, I thank you that every time we sit down, God, you're here with us. God, just bless this. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, so today I have a question for you. Where is your mind? What From what lens do you see the world? What's your perspective like? Today I want to have a serious talk about your walk with Christ. When we are saved, God calls us a new creation. We're new. That change isn't easy. In fact, it's extremely hard. And like a lot of change that we try, there is some backsliding, some going back to where we were. Um. We also have a tendency, and it's so easy to see things skewed from a worldly perspective because sometimes what the world said seems wise, but that way leads to death. So today I want to look at a Bible story of Saul, of when Saul gets rejected as king. So right, Israel has been led by God, the judges, and then they see everybody else, they want a king, right? So they they tell God, we want a king. Um... God anoints Saul, right? He's tall. He's good looking. At first, he seems to be following what God wants. Today, we're going to read the story of when Saul, when God rejects Saul as king. So if you have your Bibles, Bible apps, let's turn to 1 Samuel 15 and we'll read from verse 1. Samuel also said to Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, hosts. I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them, but kill both man and women, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep and camel and donkey. So Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telaim, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley. Then Saul said to the Kenites, Go, depart, get down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites, and Saul attacked the Amalekites, from Havilah all the way to Shur, which is east of Egypt. He also took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good, and were unwilling to utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless they utterly destroyed. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, I greatly regret that I have set up a king, Saul, as king. For he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried out to the Lord all night. So when Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul went to Carmel, and indeed he has set up a monument for himself. And he has gone around, passed by, and gone down to Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. But Samuel said, What then is the bleeding of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing of oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, Be quiet, and I will tell you what the Lord has said to me last night. And he said to him, Speak on. So Samuel said, When you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do an evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and gone on the mission which the Lord sent me, and brought back Agag, king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took the plunder, sheep, and oxen, and best things which should have been utterly destroyed, so to sacrifice to the Lord in Gilgal. 
So, in this story, we know, we've from a biblical perspective, we've seen it. Saul did not do what the Lord had asked. Um, but let's look at it from a worldly perspective. If you're thinking of a king, right, he's going to go, he's going to destroy the Amalekites, he's going to take the plunder, and in this case, he had mercy and saved the king. So, from a world perspective, he did a good job, right? He did what he was supposed to. Um, from my calculations, he did about 90% of what the Lord said, right? 90% is an A. So because he saved the king, because he saved the, sh- the best of the sheep and oxen, that's enough that God didn't want him to be king anymore? What's up with that, right? I mean, by worldly standards, Saul did a great job. But... It is so dangerous when we see things as Christians, when we decide to look through worldly perspective. Because um, it's crucial that our minds focus on the Bible, that we have that biblical perspective, that we have the way that the Lord wants us to think, right? Um, Saul selfishly thought of himself. He wasn't thinking of what God wanted in God's perspective. He thought of Saul's perspective perspective. And God, seeing that, said, you are not fit to be king, right? So he denounced him as king. Um, So in light of this story and the things that you're doing and what God is calling to you, how are you doing? Have you hit 90%? Are you following God only to a certain percent? Are you seeing the world perspective? Are you starting to get that? Is that creeping in? It's so crucial every day that we are in the word and prayer. I saw a meme the other day that said the Bible is such an amazing book because it's the only book that every time you sit down to study, the author sit down, sits down with you. So God gave us the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit guides us through this book on how we should live. And that's where our perspective has to come. We have to be careful. It's so easy to get selfish. It's so easy to see things the way that the Bible doesn't show it. But that's sin. That's not following God. Jesus said in Luke 9, 23 and 24, Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Daily we need to deny ourselves. Daily we need to take up that cross. That's not an easy thing to do. I mean, the cross is a painful thing. Look what, I mean, Jesus went through for us. And we need to follow Jesus in that, right? It says, um, take up his cross and follow me. Okay? So, another little context thing to show where your mind is. So, th- that verse in Luke came from after Jesus shortly fed the 5,000, right? Now, it's not in Luke, but in Mark and Matthew, it talks about feeding of the 4,000. It's actually a chapter before each of those in Matthew and um, Luke. And in those verses, so it's funny because, sorry, in those, the feeding of the 4,000 happens, and then the feeding of the 5,000. So the disciples are with him in both cases, right? And here's just to show you kind of mindset, worldly perspective type thing. The second time, the feeding of the 5,000, the disciples ask, where are we going to get all this food? Like they just forgot about the feeding of the 4,000 and what Jesus did, right? They were with Jesus and forgot that. So how important it is, is it that we, on a daily basis, get in this word to keep our mind and perspective with Christ, who we are following. Every day we need to do that. So just some encouragement as we go. If you're listening to this, right, you're working, you're putting the work in, you're listening to these podcasts that are studying the Bible, make sure you get into the word every day, following what God has. Keep your mindset a biblical one, right? So, Thank you so much. Have a great day.